it's that time of year when the sun's out and the carp are up on the surface. So what better time to have a look at some new surface fishing products from Fox. We've got a dedicated surface fishing mainline and as well as that we've got a new range of controllers, the Exocet. Now before we go into any detail, I'm actually going to hand over to Mark Pitchers, who this time last year, in the early stages of development, visited a typical day ticket lake in Peterborough with a prototype float. Let's hand over to Mark and see how he got there. Well, here we are in the middle of July, and I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but in the middle of a heat wave, the past three weeks, it's been absolutely scorchio, temperatures over 30 degrees, and it has put a few waters out of sorts. Fish haven't really been feeding that much conviction on the bottom, and instead they are up in the surface layers, which makes it prime for a bit of floater fishing. Now, for me, if I could just pick one method to catch carp on for the rest of my life, for some strange reason, it would without a doubt be floater fishing. I get no greater buzz than seeing the carp up on the surface, slurping down mixers, and as they inch closer and closer to your hook bait, you find yourself almost willing them to make a mistake. And when you do finally catch one, I just get that much more satisfaction from catching a float caught carp. It just seems to carry a little bit more merit for me personally than a carp caught off the bottom. So here we are, I've had an afternoon spare. So I'm here at Sibson Day Ticket Lake near Peterborough. There's carp cruising all over the surface. I'm armed with this, just the bare necessities, a lightweight, lightweight sort of floater fishing outfit here, which I'm quite thankful for because it's absolutely scorching today. I've got my FX combo mat here. And in there, I've got my rod, net, sling, and a pair of scales as well. Uh, and then here, in my, in my bucket carry-all, I've got all the floaters I need, I've got a throw-in stick, I've got my camera, and all the basic essential items I'm going to need for a, for a day's floater fishing. So, with that, I think I'm going to do a, a lap of the lake and uh, try and find myself a few carp. <laughs> Well, I've had a good walk around the lake and I found quite a lot of fish down at the far end in amongst all the weed. And um, I've been trickling floats for quite a while now and there's quite a few fish feeding confidently. So it's about time we made a cast. Now, this is actually a perfect opportunity to test out a, a new product, a new controller that we're working on. This is at the very, very early development stages here. But the advantages of this float, as you can see, it hangs almost like a helicopter setup. What that does, it gives it great aerodynamics. But as the line tightens when you're playing a fish, it almost acts like a, an inline sort of setup because of the, the slot that's angled on the back of the float there. Like I said, this is at its very early development stages. This has got a clear, clear plastic top. Um, these probably will be coloured and interchangeable, um, weighted at the bottom, and it also um, really does aid in, in hooking the fish as well. It has superb uh, bolt effect properties. So, this is uh, going to be the very first time it's been in the water. So let's give it a go. Now the other advantage of this float is it isn't going to dive very far under the water because it's shaped like an egg. And because I've got an island in front of me, I'm unable to cast beyond the fish and wind, wind the rig into, into the feeding fish. So this rig is going to land, the float is going to land right in among the feeding fish and it shouldn't spook them at all. Right, it's a bit of a tricky, tricky cast this one. There's quite a lot of overhanging trees. There's someone else's line hanging from a branch there. 
I've landed that float right in amongst them feeding fish. They're certainly not phased. I can see fish swimming around the float right now. You notice I'm, uh, I've got the waders on ready. It is a weedy old swim, this. And I think if we do hook one, I don't think I'm going to land it from the bank. I think I'm going to have to go in and, and retrieve it. There's fish all over around the float there. They've certainly not been phased by the introduction of the rig. There we go. That was a really explosive take. So the float's doing its job with the bolt effect, that's for sure. I'm going to give them a little bit of a bit more stick than I would normally, just because of all this weed. That really was a, a textbook take, that. A real eruption on the surface means you don't have to concentrate on your hook bait, you can concentrate on feeding the swim. And it becomes very obvious once a, a fish has made a mistake. It's fairly clear there, so I'll let him do what he wants to do there. Hopefully he'll tie himself in that bit of open water. I think he's got a bit of weed over his eyes, so he's, uh, he seems to have calmed down a bit. He's been quite cooperative, actually. Let's try and get him through this little gap in the weeds, and we uh, should be more or less there. That's a nice fully scaled, that. Nice looking fish. Just that little, that little wall of weed, once we get him over there. And we've got him. <laughs> Let's have a look at him. Oh, he's a pretty fish. Cracking little fully scaled that. That's a proper result. I'm absolutely made up with him. Float did his job. Nice one. Let's have a look at him. Well, as you can see, he's absolutely nailed. The float's certainly done his job. Looks right back in his mouth. And that was aided by the, the flat sides on the float, which give it more resistance in the water. It really does emphasize the bolt effect. You don't have to strike when you get a take. All you see is a big eruption on the surface where the fish is hooked. It's a case of lifting the rod, and away you go. He's very lean, they've only recently spawned, which is his nice side. There you go. Look at that for a fully scaled. What a little minter. <laughs> I made up with that. It's good to see the, the float working as it should. And I've just looked over the cameraman's shoulder as I heard them slurping down more floaters. So I think I want to get this one back and uh, have another go because they're absolutely pack manning out there. All right, let's get another one. As you can see there, I've just cast this rig into position and all the line is running along the surface right the way out to the float, some 25 yard out into the, into the lake. 
And that's obviously very, very important as there's fish moving around, feeding just below the surface. Last thing you want is the line to sink and come in contact them as it will spook them. And also, because everything's running above the water, it makes it much more crispy and a lot more contact with the rig. Once you, once you do get a, a, a take, everything's a lot more direct than if the line was just below the surface. Another thing I've just seen I've done there, which is why it's important to have a floating line, is a little bit of a breeze has just picked up and the floor is just beginning to drift slightly and I've got a little bit of a, a bow in the line. Because the line is floating, it's buoyant, it enables me to, to mend the line and keep a direct contact at all times. Oh, this line is a, a prototype line I'm currently working on. Um, it's a dedicated floater line. It's clear in colour, so it's got virtually, virtually invisible in the water. It seems incredibly strong. Obviously, it, it, floats, it floats very well. Just scare that coot, get away. Um, and the hook link I'm using is also a floating material. That's a zig and floater line that we currently do. And again, that has similar properties. It, it floats very well, it's clear in colour. Um, and it's also got a very, very high breaking strain, but a very fine diameter. So for cautious feeding fish, it does give you a little bit of an edge. I'm just teasing that rig back in position. But it's all worked well so far today. And there's fish feeding in front of me, so I'm hoping it's going to work again. Just shot on the hook link down there to about two foot. A few of the fish have just been a little bit cagey, only just to say covering the, the lips over the hook bait. So I'm hoping by shorting, shortening the hook link, it might just uh, increase the, the bolt effect of the rig. Hopefully, uh, result in a in a good hookup. I've managed to hook into another fish. Well, it seemed as though shortening down that hook link definitely did the trick. I was literally first cast from doing that. And he's got himself well and truly lodged in the weed. Well and truly. Well, we had some right dramas with this fella. I had to uh, go in to, to retrieve him. Water came over the waders a couple of times, so I got a good soak in. He's well spawned out, but check that out. He's a proper scaly little fella, isn't he? Great looking fish. Looks like a snake. <laughs> but I'm over the moon with this one. It's been quite uh, tricky this afternoon. They've, uh, really have been on guard since that first fish we caught. So it's nice to put another fish on the bank. And a great looking fish too. Well, let's get him back. Well, we saw Mark there having a bit of fun with our new X set controllers. I'm doing just the same here. The sun's starting to drop a little bit and it's that time of day that's absolutely perfect for a bit of short session surface fishing. Spent 20 minutes or so getting them going on the surface. And once the swim was primed and ready, fired the rig out beyond them 
brought it back, and it didn't take too long before one of those mouths came up and greedily slurped down those mixers. And once I've got this one in, I'll show you the modifications that we've made to this float since you first saw Mark use the very early prototypes last summer. one beaten, lovely common. Well that's the first one of the session in the net, I think we'll get it out on the mat and have a look at it. Well here we have it, the first fish of the evening, lovely little mill haze common, might just about break double figures on a good day this one. What I'm going to do now is pop this one back, get a few more floaters out on the lake, see if we can get the fish feeding with confidence again and then we're going to have a look in more detail at the float that I've been using. Well, you saw the early prototype in action, and here's the finished production model. As you can see, there's been quite a few changes along the way. First and foremost, you'll notice that it's a totally different colour. We've gone for this low spook, translucent green, and in tests, we found that the fish feed around this without paying much attention to it at all, which is obviously just what you want when you're floater fishing. On the top there, you can see we've gone for a nice bright orange, which means it really stands out when there's a bit of ripple or wave on the lake. Another little change, if I just pop the swivel out there, you'll notice that we've got a rubber grommet that sits just inside the front there, and that means that the size 10 swivel just locks into place like so. And that's a feature that we'll come back to in a minute. Mark mentioned about being able to change the size of the floats, and by putting a thread into the cap, it means that you can actually switch between the two sizes, that being the medium and the large. So if, for example, you're fishing at 20, 30 yards, and the fish push out or the wind picks up and you need something a bit bigger, it's really easy just to change floats without breaking down the end tackle. Now I mentioned about the little swivel, and within the pack, not only do you get a standard swivel like this, you also get a quick change one and a micro anti-tangle sleeve, so that you can easily switch between a lighter or heavier hook link to suit the conditions on the day. Now that we've got the perfect controller, we needed a main line to go with it. And the main line that I've been using and testing recently has been Surface. It's a brand new line, which is absolutely designed as an out and out float fishing line. It's got three key features. That being low diameter, which obviously makes it easy to cast. And also as well as that, easy to mend the line. So you can just lift it off the water to keep the line straight as your controller or your bait drifts across the surface. It's low vis, and obviously this is really important to prevent fish spooking, which is something that can occur really, really easily when you're obviously fishing on the surface. And most importantly of all, it's neutral buoyancy, so it stays up there, out of the way of the feeding fish, and obviously by not coming into contact with them, you're not gonna spook them. It's on a spool of 250 meters, so enough to fill the smaller reels that you're most likely gonna be using for this style of fishing, and is available in 12 and 15 pounds to cover all situations. We've now got the ultimate controller, a purpose-made floater line, so there's absolutely no excuses not to go out and bag a summer whacker off the surface.